Put your hands up, Ted ordered me, and back up slowly. I obeyed. Why hadn't I taken the gun from him while he'd been unconscious and I'd been getting his keys? I thought to myself, panic. I hadn't been thinking clearly. Shut the door. I did. Now turn around slowly. I turned slowly to face him. Instantly, he savagely whipped the pistol across my face, an explosion of pain in my cheekbone. I fell to the floor. I could feel fresh blood trickling down my cheek. The barrel had cut my face. Ted towered over me, aiming the revolver in my face, his eyes burning with hatred and vengeance. Small fragments of glass were embedded in his face from the shattered coffee pot. That was for hitting me with the coffee pot, he grunted. He kicked me as hard as he could in the muscle of my thigh. The pain was enormous. I screamed. And that was for breaking a chair over my head. I writhed on the floor. Get up. I moaned. Get up. Now. I don't think I can. I gasped. He shoved the gun between my eyes. You better be able to walk or I'll cancel your show right here. You have three seconds. One. In agony, I forced myself to my feet before he got to two. He went behind me, placing the barrel of the gun back behind my head. I heard him relock the front door and put the keys in his pocket. Start walking. Where? Upstairs. Move slowly. Don't even think of trying something. At gunpoint, he forced me up the stairs and down the hallway. Stop. We were standing at the other padlocked door, the one I had never been in before. I realized it must be his room. I heard the jingle of the keys as he dangled them in front of me, holding one in particular. Take this and unlock it. I did. Now open it. I hesitated. I, I was terrified. I had never seen Ted's room, but based on what I knew about him, I didn't think I wanted to. I knew what he was planning to do to me must be something pretty horrible. But he pushed the barrel of the gun against the back of my head hard. One. Two. I took a deep breath and opened the door. He was dark inside. Go in. I entered. I walked six steps into the blackness and then Ted told me to stop. Behind me, I heard him flip the light switch. The light came on. I looked around, horrified and repulsed. Welcome to the happiest place on earth. He sneered behind me. If Francis's room was a reflection of his shattered, stunted, childlike personality, then Ted's room was a reflection of his twisted, dark, vile personality. The walls were covered with ugh, images that I wish I could erase from my brain. There's violence, there's s and crime scene photos of mutilated bodies, medical textbook pictures of deformed fetuses, black and white photos of Nazi atrocities from the Holocaust, and still images from horror movies depicting women being violently murdered. And all of the women had my face. <laughs> pictures of my face from the show till death do us part, which had been cut out and pasted over theirs. Go over to the bed, he told me. I did. The sheets were disgusting. I, I was sickened. And then I saw the ropes. Four ropes. One tied to each of the bedposts, hanging limply. I turned to him. I can leave. I pleaded, I can go away, you'll never see me again, I'll, I'll stay away from Francis, I, I won't go to the police. He snorted a contemptuous laugh. You're doing all of those things regardless, after we're finished here. I looked him in the eye, speaking calmly and defiantly. Shoot me if you want, kill me, but I'm not doing what you're about to ask of me. Fine, I'll kill you, but then I'm heading down to Mississippi to find your son, and when I do, I'm going to castrate him. 
frightened that I, I, I decided to comply. Ugh, I could smell him on the sheets. It was an experience that I would rather not repeat. He methodically tied me down until I couldn't move. He stood, looking down at me, smirking. You know, you ain't half bad looking for an old woman. You looked a lot better in your prime, but still, not half bad now. I can see why my brother likes you so much. Screw you! I spat. He chuckled. That's exactly why I brought you up here. He set the point three fifty seven magnum on the nightstand, only a couple of feet from my right hand. I realized the rope around my left wrist wasn't as tight as the others, and I began twisting my hand around. If I could get loose, I could roll over to my right end. His horrible face was right above mine, only a couple inches away, and he grinned at me hideously. You know, he told me, I always hated having to share with Francis as a kid, but in this case, I'm willing to be generous and make an exception. I spat in his face. He roared with rage and slapped me with all of his strength, knocking my head to the side again and again. You are going to pay for that, he hissed. You are going to pay! He began to grab at my dress. Why? I wailed at him. Why are you doing this? Because of what you turned my brother into, he shouted at me. I tried to bring him upright, make him tough so he'd be a man. And then he found you. He hissed the word with unmeasurable disgust. You've been leading my brother around like a dog on a leash for 25 years. You turned him into a little sissy. You're just jealous because he loves me. I'm something about him you can't control. He doesn't need you or any other woman. I'm all he needs. He would have been better off without you. I shot back. He could have had a normal life if it hadn't been for having a sicko like you for a brother. He slapped me again. Now you're going to get it. I told you what I was going to do last time if you did it again. Here, terror overwhelmed me, as if I'd been dunked into a bath full of ice water. He pulled out his butcher knife, holding it up for me to see. I'll fix you, just like I fixed the brakes on our parents' car. <gasps> you, you killed them? I said, feeling sick. He shrugged. They spoiled him, just like you did. But, but he said you, you blamed him, because you had to quit college and take care of him. If it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't have had to do it. He placed the edge of the blade against my face. After I finish, I'm going to leave what's left of you in his room as a little surprise. Show him who's boss around here. He began trailing the blade lightly down my throat. Eddie, I cried out, sobbing. Eddie, help me! Don't let him hurt me! Ted laughed cruelly. You're just as nuts as Francis is. Eddie ain't real, sugar. Just like you won't be in a minute. Francis! Francis, help me! I screamed. There was nothing else I could do. He kept trailing the blade down my body. And it, it paused. Ted's evil smile faded. Replaced with a puzzled expression that turned into wide-eyed shock. He recoiled from me as if he'd been shocked. He turned and threw the butcher knife he'd been holding flew across the room, its blade embedding in the wall. Ted grabbed his head, squeezing it between his hands like he was trying to crush it. Get out! Get out! Get out! She is mine! Another voice spoke through his lips. Not Ted's, and not Eddie's. It, it was the quivery voice of that wounded little boy, now speaking with a lifetime of repressed rage that had finally been released. Leave her alone! Get away from her! I never wanted to hurt her, ever! I just wanted to love her! That's all I wanted! He balled up his fist and brutally punched himself in the nose over and over again. And Ted yelled in pain. He fell off the bed and lay writhing on the floor, clawing at his own face. <sighs> I twisted my wrist around. The rope felt a little looser. And Ted stood up, seeming to struggle against an invisible opponent. Some incredible conflict was going on in his mind. It was if, as if his two or three... Individual personalities were battling to the death for control of this single body. His face kept switching back and forth between Ted and Eddie. Ted and Eddie. Ted and Eddie. 
For a moment, Ted was able to wrestle control away from Eddie, Francis, and grab the revolver from the nightstand. Immediately, Eddie took over, raising Ted's hand into his mouth and sinking his teeth into it, biting hard enough to draw blood. Ted shrieked and dropped the gun to the floor where Eddie kicked it, sending it under the bed out of reach. I almost had my hand free of the rope. Ted took possession again. He punched himself or Eddie in the stomach hard. I'll cut her open. How do you like that? He went to the wall where the butcher knife was protruding and yanked it free. He began closing in on me for the kill. This is all your fault, he snarled. All your fault. With an extreme force of will, Eddie took control. No! He screamed in pure anguish. He raised the knife and, and stabbed himself in the stomach, driving the blade to the hilt. He pulled it out and, and stabbed himself again and again and again and again. Ted took over one final time. There was a look of sheer horror on his face. No, he wailed. You killed us both. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to burn again. And then Ted was gone. Eddie dropped the bloody knife and collapsed to the floor. My hand came loose from the rope. As fast as I could, I untied the other ropes and got up, running to the bedroom door. I started through it and then looked back. Eddie was lying in a pool of blood, still barely alive, looking at me. I turned to flee, but stopped. I went back in and knelt beside him. His breathing was weak. He was dying quickly. But he was also smiling. A serene smile. The smile of a man finally at peace after a lifetime of being at odds with himself. That faraway look was gone from his eyes and he seemed truly lucid and there for the first time. Maybe for the first time since he'd been a child. Oh God, Eddie, I moaned. He's gone, Eddie gasped. Ted's finally gone. I don't have to be afraid of him anymore. Yes, I said. I told, <laughs> I, I told you I'd kill him if he, he tried to hurt you. Just hold on, I told him, taking his hand. I'll get help for you. You'll be all right. He shook his head, still smiling. No, don't leave me. I want to die looking at you. The most beautiful thing in my life. Eddie, <laughs> I began, feeling tears swell in my eyes. Francis, my name is Francis, and you're, he said my real name, <laughs> and he looked at me pleadingly, stay with me, please. I stayed beside him, the color was fading from his skin, from the blood loss, he was almost gone, I love you, I always have, and I always will. Till, 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 he gasped, struggling to find the strength to finish. <laughs> till death do us part. He closed his eyes. He was dead.